thought you were in prison for life. I work for the government. Post office? You think they'd let me out of prison to deliver mail? I don't know. It's the first government job I could think of. I kill people for them, okay? This task force doesn't officially exist, which leaves us on our own. We call our targets butterflies. They are a serious threat to the safety of American citizens. Hey, right, Jamal. All right, hey, how you doing? Uh, good, good morning to you. Well, good morning from out here. It's like this eight, yeah. eight It's 30. still morning. Um, it's still morning. <laughs> okay. okay, I didn't know if you was in London or uh, New York or wherever. I'm actually in Atlanta right now filming. So like I, you know, I'm, um, I'm on sort of your time, almost. <laughs> You're in LA? Oh, yes. Where are you? Yeah, I'm in LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I guess I'm three hours ahead. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, I mean, first, I, I, I'm loving this series. At first, I didn't know how to really take it from seeing, uh, you know, like the first movie. I didn't know what I was what I was getting into, but as as I, as I, as it opens up, I really I really fall in love with this series, and I, and I, and I want to know like um, how. Has it been working with James Gunn? He's he's a, a director that I've I've just loved all his material. I mean, mm. I think uh, Guardians is you know on the Marvel side is one of the top you know five or six Marvel movies that exist. It's it's probably more, it's close to my favorite. So mm. like he's a, a director that I have a lot of adoration for. So how's it been working with James on this project? You know, when you watch his material, you you form a certain idea of who James might be, and I'm glad to say that it matches you know, the laughter, joy of life, um, heart, it, mischief, you know, dangerous, you know, he's, 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 he's subversive. And you feel like you're working with a real rock and roller of filmmaking, which he is. And he's also a wonderful human being. And, and I feel very blessed to consider him a friend. Um, so I have, there is that side of it, but there is also the side of it personally, if you're asking me personally, having worked with him, and Peacemaker and now working with him with Guardians is watching how he he wants to push me you know he wants to he's put his faith in me and kicked open the door for me but he's not going to let me sit back so you make choices and there's a wonderful dance between some choices he loves them some choices he wants something different some choices he loves them but wants to push them to the nth degree so there's a sense of collaboration he's a true it's weird because you, the genre we love, which is, you know, Marvel and DC and comic books and all that stuff. And, you know, people think of it as fun when there's so much just fun, when there's so much detail and creativity that goes into it and so much heart. And that's what I think he does is he takes these big spectacle numbers and puts so much heart in it. And that's why we, 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 we love his films, not just that we, enjoyed them we genuinely love them and they have a special place for us so so it, he reflects what you experience in his films as a person i wonder have you yet dealt with the the conversation here at least here on black twitter about uh the the black brit actors taking um taking uh, roles that people are, are like get, get angry about. I think uh, yeah. Cynthia definitely dealt with it uh, with Harriet. Um, mm. the, I don't think the conversation was was as loud when David Oyelowo did uh, Selma, but you know, Selma. have you have you been hearing that this 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 thing that that it's people, it's, it's a lot of people, there's a lot of defenders and it's a lot of people yeah. that for some reason get very angst about all these roles uh, you know, for this talent yeah. from, from London. I, I, I can't, you know, uh, I get it. Of course I get it because in the, 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 the basic denominator is that these American roles, especially when you think of Martin Luther King or, you know, or Aretha or all these great roles that are Americans being played. So I, I get the discussion. I don't agree with it in the sense that I think art and acting is very universal. I don't think directors and producers have any sort of agenda to say, oh, I want to cast a Brit or an Australian or whatever for this role. I think that you have to trust their genuine desire to cast who they think is the best actor for their project. That's yeah. not saying this is the best actor to play Martin Luther King or the best actor to play this, you know, is for their project, this is how, who we want to work with. And I think it's a very, tricky ground to do that because you know I grew up I saw Denzel Washington play Stephen Biko yeah I yeah. saw Morgan Freeman play Nelson Mandela yeah um 
where do we draw the line? Do we just say that as an artist, you stick to your country and your native tongue and that's it? So I, I genuinely get it, especially for African-Americans who have been, for the most part in the industry, underrepresented in the first place, you know? But I, I think one should trust the, that, that there isn't an agenda out there to make it have to be a Brit and to try to support, to think more about that, that um, supportive nature of seeing those stories being told in the first place and thank god and judge the person if they've done a good job or yeah. not as opposed to where they're from in the first place and shutting the door to it but i to say that i don't um sympathize with the dis the, with the argument would be wrong i completely get it but i think that's a general question for the industry as a whole to make more roles available so there isn't a sense of of that was taken from me you know, that's the problem. When you think there isn't enough, that's when you think something is taken from you. So we need to make sure there's more available in general. I hope that sort of answers your question. You know? Yeah, and I, and I think that we've definitely seen a, a increase in, in, in storytelling of different uh, fabrics of stories. And I think, mm -hmm. the, you know, I think the streaming platforms have had a lot to do with that, like HBO Max or like- Yeah. Netflix with when they see Netflix. it, you know, all, all these different platforms are given these different stories and these different roles that even five, six years ago was, you know, just not the, available. It just, it just went, well, the big reason, Jamal, that I'm, I'm, I moved to the States was I, I needed more. I needed more when I moved, moved back to New York, like nine years ago, I was like, I, I, if I'm going to have a chance at this, I need to be in the States where it's because th there wasn't even enough coming at that time. There wasn't streaming and stuff and all that. So it was live it was if i wanted more i had to make that move and i think the streaming and the availability is wonderful it's growing still a long way to go but i think um it's a joy to 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 turn on the screen and 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 see color you know <laughs> more and more a year ago Alan Copperberg, the billionaire CEO of Wearsoft and pop singer Vandalia, perished in a plane crash. During their autopsies, small insect-like winged creatures, presumably extraterrestrial, were found in their skulls. This is when we first became aware of the butterflies. Since then, we found the creatures in a handful of high-profile politicians, celebrities, and titans of industry. They enter the human body through one of its orifices and burrow through the brain, where they're then in control of the body. They go through the butt? I think that's just some uh, creativity on the part of whomever did the animation. The butt is an orifice, OK? That means they'd have to crawl through poop. Just because they're aliens doesn't make them gross. Bigotry. Superman's an alien. He's got a poop fetish. Get what? the fuck out of here. Oh, yeah. He uberly bays the old shizers. I understand it. Where do you get this nonsense? Google. Well, it's not true. You know more than Google? Well, congratulations. The butterfly's unique genetic structure and chemistry interact with the host bodies, giving them strength far beyond that of a human being. And what's the chimp for? Chimpanzees have four times the strength of human beings, so they're both strong. Yeah, and we're supposed to get that just by looking at this dye beard? I thought that man and the chimp were friends. I was thinking they were about to go on an adventure together. This viscous amber fluid has been found on the premises of all the dead butterflies. Lab studies show the fluid's genetic structure is dissimilar to anything on this planet. The fluid seems to be the butterfly's only food source, which makes what Leota discovered last night potentially significant. This was on the bulletin board in the Goff home. Leota noticed that this is also where Annie Sturphausen was employed. Ha! Ah, ah, you fucking suck at PowerPoint, Tybee! Yeah, well, you can do it next time. It's not like I enjoy doing this. Yeah, you do. It's amazing the incredible amount of time you put into this presentation and how incredibly shitty it still is. OK, Peacemaker, <laughs> shut up. Dude, I didn't mean to put your father in prison. Then why'd you put him there, you fat fuck? Because I couldn't think of anybody else. What about Ariana Grande or Drake? What? Brad Pitt or Payne Stewart or Doug the Pug? 
Khloe Kardashian, the Red Tiger from Voltron, Fran Tarkenton, Joe Montana, Joe Montana, Eddie fuck? Murphy, Michael Jordan, Michael B. Jordan, BTS, Eugene Levy, fuck dude, John that? Lovitz, shut the fuck up and listen, man, I'm giving you a list of people you could have done, Danny DeVito, Will Ferrell, Howard Stern, Baba Booey, Robin Ophelia, Quivers, Alice Cooper, Ozzy Osbourne, Sharon Osbourne, Bill Cosby, he just got out, he's got time on his hands, Amy Winehouse. Dude, Amy Winehouse is fucking dead. Optimus Prime, Shipwreck, Cobra Commander, the fucking cunts from Riverdale. All right, next time I fucking have to frame somebody, it'll be one of all those fucking thousands of people you just mentioned. Yeah, tell that to my dad. Peacemaker, shut the fuck up. Do you all want to be here till tomorrow? Do you have cable? So I don't want to stay here overnight if there's no cable. Fargo's on tonight. It was a rhetorical question. Oh, okay. Well, then I changed my answer to just ignoring the question. Not another word. Uh, now, you, you act, you're an actor. I mean, you're uh, uh, born in Nigeria. So, so Nigerian parents, as far as I know, if I was just do a stereotype of my, my ex-in-laws uh, are yeah. Nigerian. Um, it's it's like it's like doctor, lawyer, engineer, entrepreneur. Engineer. Like, There's uh, only three professions: a doctor, <laughs> lawyer, and an engineer. Those are the only three professions. <laughs> and, and, and so, how was the support for you when 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 you decided to go into the realm of acting? Like, did you get a lot? Of yeah, good it was. I was. I got offered a scholarship to go to a drama school when I was at Yale doing economics, um, junior year. And I didn't tell my parents till my senior year because I, I just didn't want to deal with it. I was like, they'll never go for it. Eventually, I had to tell them that I, after I finished my economics degree at Yale, I was going to go into acting. And I wrote this letter. And to this day, Jamal, I have the response from my uh, dad. And I, as it turns out, as it usually is my mom also, because they're usually the, the sensible ones. But it was a beautiful letter of honesty saying, of course, this is not what we were expecting. But as parents, Nigerian parents, our goal was actually not to live your life for you, but to give you the best possible education and the best possible chance. You've yeah. chosen this, now go live your life. Yeah. And that was beautiful. And without that support, I don't know how I make it through drama school. I don't know how I make it through the first early years where you're earning a couple of hundred dollars a week and trying to pay rent in London. You know, they were so supportive because when they made that decision, when I made the decision, this is what I wanted, they knew they had fulfilled their part of the bargain, which is give them the best opportunity. And I know I'm one of the lucky Nigerian kids in that sense, but that's how, that was their reasoning. And if there's something that has driven me a lot is that faith they had in me, you know, that faith that this is what you're supposed to do. If you believe that, we believe you and we support that. So I was one of the lucky ones because I have a lot of Nigerian friends that I, I think they've been acting like 10, 15 years and still haven't told their parents what they do. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. But, and what, one thing I love about the story as we open up into later episodes, and I don't want to reveal any spo spoilers, but it seems like they uh, everybody gets unlikely foes uh, to, you know, people are... are, are, are are joining fights that that you wouldn't think are gonna either be together or or have to work mm -hmm. together, and I I feel like we're at a time in the world where we've been so factioned and in, in these political little silos that that something like that needs to bring us all together also, like you know some something to yeah. fight for. So I feel I like think, it's a good analogy. This. Yeah, and think of the main relationship in that series for all the fun and games. The main relationship is very much you know, Adebayo and Peacemaker, yeah. the two the two extremes of America, <laughs> you know, and yeah. watching them be true to the, who they are and what they represent, but still finding this thing. You can see them just coming together, listening to each other, arguing with each other, disagreeing, but still listening, you know, and that's what we've lost. It isn't that we haven't always had, you know, the right wing and the left wing or like, you know, different religious ideas and uh, we've always had that but the problem of recent is that the, the listening has stopped the compromise has stopped and I think if the biggest one of the biggest things that can come out of this show in that brilliant way of social change social change is always done through a, I think art is the vanguard of making social change because there's something beautiful and sugared and human about trying to change society through art 
And I think if something comes out of this that James and I know everyone would be really proud of is that idea that, you know, we can we can still talk to each other and hell, we could still be friends, even if we disagree, you know, um, I hope that comes out of it. I got I got to ask. I'm curious, you know, going back to your roots. I mean, first, first, uh, are, are you Yoruba, Igbo, Ibibio? <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, you say your your ex was from Nigeria. I'm evil. I'm actually evil. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But it seems to be like there's uh, my my ex in laws also went to University of Wisconsin. I'm, I'm curious, like, is this like the big Nigerian? Uh, the, the no. <laughs> Are you kidding? With the weather in Wisconsin, you think Nigeria? Yeah, that's, that's the weirdest thing. No, so, um, I when I was at Yale undergrad, the head of undergrad drama was appointed the head of the cons uh, uh, conservatory in Milwaukee and offered me a full ride scholarship. That's why I ended up in Wisconsin because my ass isn't going up to that cold for any other reason, you know, <laughs> much as I grew to love Wisconsin, but no, I, I mean, I just can't imagine a place less fitted, you know, weather-wise for Nigerians than being in Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, I, I, I've loved uh, you and uh, John Wick and Designated Survivor and, oh, thank and you. Underground. Busy, busy year with the Underground and, and this project and, and going into Guardians. But I uh, can't wait to see more of you on screen. You worked with one of my close friends, Ava, and, uh, you know, I, I really, oh. really love Ava. We talked about James Gunn, but I've been. I, I, I adore yeah. Ava. Yeah. yeah so. I mean, what a trailblazer. I'm very lucky that in the last couple of years I've worked with people you can genuinely call trailblazers Ava was very much the beginning of that with when they see us and then Barry Jenkins and and now James in their own way you know making change so in that sense I feel feel very blessed yeah yeah well I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed to see, see and you. send her my love <laughs> I will do so can't wait to yeah. see more of you and uh keep on doing your thing man I, I love you thank character. you so much good luck to you and thank you and thank you for your questions I really enjoyed your questions you know, take care of yourself. I hope you get to have some egusi soup and some jollof rice and stuff soon. You know, I mean, just because it's, it's the it all, eggs doesn't huh? mean you stop. It doesn't mean you stop eating Nigerian food, my friend. No, it's in my body now. I was a ten year man. Yeah. I know everything. The sweet mother. I know. I, I'm so I'm so engrossed in the, in the culture, and I, I respect the culture and everything. So, you know, to all the to all the Niger fans out there, I know they love you like all the other actors out here, and, and everybody's gonna gonna love you in, in all these roles and this is a great show so keep doing your thing we'll keep on watching brother thank you it means a lot to me jamal and you stay safe best to you and yours yeah thank you bye-bye okay,